The Sears Center Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, about 30 miles northwest of Chicago, where on this first weekend in March, it is the 43rd edition of the American Cup, the most important international competition held in the United States each year. Steve Schlanger with the Olympic gold medalist, Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin as the international gymnastics season really starts to heat up a huge event, Tim. Absolutely, you know, if you're a gymnast from the United States or around the world, you wanna do a bunch of things. You wanna win the Olympic Games, a world championships, a national title, and you wanna win the American Cup. Absolutely, and this is the competition that they are now going to gear at towards the rest of the season, later on the world championships, and of course, Tokyo in 2020. And now let's meet the gymnasts competing today here in Chicago. Competing for Canada, Brooklyn Moores. Representing Germany, Philipp Herder. Competing for People's Republic of China, Mao Yi. Representing Great Britain, James Hall. Competing for France, Laurette Chappé. Competing for Japan, Kenzo Shirai. <laughs> Representing Germany, Elizabeth Seitz. Competing for Spain, Nestor Abad. Competing for Great Britain, Kelly Sim. <laughs> Representing Ukraine, Pietro Pagnuk. <laughs> Competing for Japan, Mai Murakami. Representing the USA, Alan Bauer. <laughs> Representing the USA, Morgan Hurd. <laughs> Representing the USA, Yule Moldauer. And representing the USA, Miley O'Keefe. So on our way to the start of the American Cup, the warm-up set to commence as we continue from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. back at the Sears Center Arena in the suburbs of Chicago. First Saturday in March, spring approaching, and before these gymnasts know it, Tokyo 2020 will be approaching as well. A very international field, but the one common theme that all of these athletes have is the fact that they're already thinking about the next Olympic Games. Without question, it is the dream, the goal, the hope of every single person competing here today. You know, I think as much as they can tell us that they're not thinking about it and they're trying to keep it in the back of their head, they're absolutely thinking about it. That is, of course, the main goal, Tim. As you said, you want to win a national championship, so world championships, Olympic Games, all around gold medal. And here at the American Cup, that title here, especially for an American gymnast, is something that you dream about. You did them all, right? <laughs> no, I did not get a world title. Oh, wow. 
All around. <laughs> well, speaking of the Americans, Morgan Hurd on the women's side, certainly the one to watch. Absolutely. She was the reigning world champion in the all around, had a coming out party in Montreal, did a fantastic job. She, she was absolutely incredible. You know, she went from the national championships, I believe, being in sixth place about a month later, going on to win a world all-around title. She's the one to watch. And on the men's side, one of the marquee names is from the University of Oklahoma, the 21-year-old Yule Muldauer. Alan Bauer also in the mix today as well. Inside the Sears Center Arena, men completing their warm-ups for the floor exercise as things are about to commence. And we will get it started with the 26-year-old from Ukraine, Petro Paknyuk. He was born in Kiev and has been around the block. He's a three-time member of a world championship team for Ukraine and was also a team member for their squad in Rio back in 2016. Actually, he's had a very curious past he started competing for Ukraine, then was basically recruited by Azerbaijan, went there, and has recently returned back to Ukraine. One thing to remember about the American Cup, though, it is very early in the, on the international calendar. And so sometimes we see athletes that aren't quite at their peak yet. Wow, he starts out with a really difficult, that was a two and a half twisting double back somersault. Really difficult as well, but you'll see those low landings. So you want to look for their chest, the position that they land. Oh boy. And that right there. Very bad, a full point he'll lose for that. Now he's a little bit rattled. Another very difficult double twisting, double somersault. You know, you gotta take the risks in gymnastics, but for example, the landing that he had on that double-double, I think he lost all of the value that he was given for doing that double-double. Floor exercise is timed. He has 10 seconds after that bell to complete. Little sluggish at the end, triple fall. Hard enough, but just really, that mistake though, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, so overall, as you said, Tim, very difficult routine, but every single landing incurred a deduction, especially that fall. But the mount was spectacular. This really difficult, two and a half twisting, double somersault, and he's landing forward, which makes it even harder on floor. Look at that, scoots one more half turn around. Little bit of a squat down low on that. But here's where it went wrong. So a combination pass, one and a half to a front double full and just didn't have enough power, enough rotation. Almost looked like on the punch, he just didn't quite get enough power. So, not the expected start that he was anticipating. We'll try to shake it off as we take you through the scoring system and to try and simplify it as much as possible. It's color coded. A green is a good score, red not a good score, and yellow is pretty much everything in between. And those are the deductions. So there are two components to every score. There's a difficulty score, which is additive, and then there's the deductions, which are Start at a 10, and so if somebody has one, four, or better, in today's world, that's a pretty good score. And the judges seem to get harsher every year, don't and, they? Especially they after an Olympic Games. You know what? And they, they have been so critical since the last Olympic Games, and certain events are even just off the charts difficult. Well, Alan Bauer will be our first American set to turn 23 years of age this coming Wednesday. A U.S. all-around silver medalist from Arizona who is going to school at the University of Oklahoma and who hopes to be going to medical school soon as well. Yes, he does. He actually had an interview scheduled for this week in Denver. And when he got the invite, he had to make the decision, what do I do? He called up Denver and he said, I have this huge opportunity. Can I reschedule? They said, okay. So it was all well and good. But this guy right here, 
I'll tell you what, if we see athletes like we just saw from the Ukrainians stumble a little bit, my guess is he will be right there to grab his chance because of all the athletes in this competition, I have never seen anyone more consistent than this guy right here. And that was, of course, his goal. And, you know, we, we always kind of laugh when the athletes say, I want to hit four for four, or six for six, meaning that they want to hit every single event they compete. But for him, he also just wants to enjoy the experience. Well, 13.066. You see the red mark. Not good for the Ukrainian getting things underway. Double pike and... That's what he does so well. That was actually a very low landing, but he was so patient on it. <laughs> he's not going to be the absolute most exciting gymnast in the competition, but he's gonna do stuff like that all day long. He's gonna fight for the landing, and he's not gonna give it away. Very uncharacteristic right there. His easiest tumbling run a simple for him. He's probably been able to do that for about, since he was about seven years old on floor. A double full. Landed awkwardly. Three-tenth hop and then you know, and some position errors. Those easier skills where you're not as focused. Mistakes like that could happen. But you see how he fights for every single thing. Just the dismount. Two and a half twist. Hop forward, maybe a three-tenth hop, but it is Alan Bauer is going to do that to you all day long. Not going to completely knock your socks off, but he is going to hit, hit, hit. And here's how that routine started, as Tim mentioned, a double pike. So two flips in a, excuse me, <laughs> sorry, that was the combination pass. So as Tim said, looking for those stuck landings every single pass, that is what the judges are looking for. And you know, he will get a small deduction for circling of the arms. You see right there, there's the most noticeable error in the routine. I would say that's about a three-tenth hop. And here it is, <laughs> <laughs> the opening pass. So double pike, two flips in a pike position. At the very end, his legs get a little sloppy. Low landing, so it will definitely have some deductions, but just really fought for every single landing in that routine. Yeah, many gymnasts on that double pike would have sat that down without question. I would say 90% of the guys that are competing in this meet, if they landed that way, that would have been a sit. So it's a 13.333 for Alan Bauer on the floor. And we move on to our athlete from Germany. Up next, Philip Herder. And Herder, the 25-year-old from Berlin, by his own admission, not a guy who gets those big points. He does the safe routines, gets the safe points, takes advantage of others' mistakes. Same mount we saw from Alan Bauer, done better. Double pike somersault. Another good landing. A little bit sloppy in the air on the first acrobatic element. Germany had not qualified for the Olympic Games in 2016 at the prior World Championships. That meant they needed to go to the Olympic test event. And this guy was one of the main reasons they got to go to Rio. The bad news for him is he made that Olympic test squad but was left off the Olympic team, which is heartbreaking. Pretty good routine so far. Little bit messy in the air. I would say that that's at least three in the air. Three on the first hop and another tenth off. And probably, this is how critical these judges are, probably a body position landing as well. His chest was a little bit down as he made contact with the floor. 
So again, when you're putting these routines together, you really have to think about, you know, maybe not necessarily doing the highest level of difficulty if you're not able to have great form. And here's that opening pass, that front double pike again. Great landing. A little bit of pommel horse on the floor exercise. Beautiful flare work, actually named after an American gymnast, Kurt Thomas, one of the all-time greats for Team USA. Beautiful up to a handstand, back down. At the end, triple full which is plenty hard enough, but look at the legs in the air. They're apart and then hop backward, little shuffle and then one more hop and chest down just a little bit on the landing. You know, it, it, we sound sometimes negative, but I'm just trying to give you a little perspective of what the judges are looking at as well. So 13.766, kind of a shoulder shrug, has that yellow color. It means it's kind of in the middle range of all the scores as we move on to Japan's Kenzo Shirai, the 21-year-old. And boy, this should be a show. One of the all-time greats on the floor. Unbelievable. The things he is capable of doing before he did it, if you had said he's going to do this, everybody in the world, the experts would have said, that's impossible, can't do it. It's too hard. Oh my gosh. So how many twists do you think that was? That was two flips and three twists in a laid out position and then he comes back and does it again in tuck. And he does incredible combination tumbling like that. Before he did that pass, people would have said, no, that's not possible. Won the Worlds on this event, as well as on vaulting, was a surprising bronze medalist in the all-around. His teammate, the King, oh jeez, Kohei Uchimura out of the competition midway through qualifying with a hurt ankle. And that's what Kenzo said that, you know, he was definitely surprised to win that bronze medal, but his goal was to compete right next to him. Quad twist right here. Oh boy, and he really opened the door right there in a very big way. So once again, you got to do the really hard stuff, but I wouldn't give that all the way around. I would call that a three and a half, and I believe he did a three and a half earlier. That could be a huge deal, but this is gigantic right here. Two flips in a laid out position, and he'll twist three times around. There's one, there's two, and one more time. That's impossible. <laughs> and then he followed it up by doing the same exact tumbling pass, but now in a tuck position. Two flips, three twists, spots the ground. Just absolutely incredible. So, but watch, he's supposed to be facing exactly forward at the end of this, and let's see where he contacts the floor. That is absolutely not a quad. He got it a little further around. They might, they might give it a quad. They, if they don't, this score is going to be shockingly low for Kenzo. Now an athlete who has six different skills named for him. A lot of times in other sports, you have to wait till you're retired to get things named <laughs> after you, but he's that good. But as Tim, you mentioned earlier on at the top of the show, this is really early in the season for these athletes. They are gearing up a little bit later towards the year for their national championships, the world championships. So it's a good place for them to come out, possibly try new skills, get back into that competition rhythm and feeling again. And I would say this is bad news for Kenzo right here. There's a discussion amongst the judges because what this could mean, if they don't give it the quad, if they don't give it four, he had already done a three and a half in his exercise. I don't know if they're gonna do that, but 
14.966. They gave it to him, absolutely, because his maximum score would have been much lower than that, and he escaped peril on that one, I'll tell you, and he knows it. Mm. So he gets away with one, and now Nestor Abad, 24-year-old from Spain, up next, turns 25 at the end of this month, living in Madrid, and a guy who's dealt with a number of injuries over the years. So comparative to Kenzo, just, you know, a lot easier. I was going to say, it's a little hard to follow up. <laughs> Absolutely. After Kenzo's routine. But what he can do is he can be a lot cleaner. The landings can be good. That one, however, big hop to the side and landed in a squat. Nice flare work as well. When you go up to a handstand and back down into flares, it's called a gagalatze for fantastic Soviet gymnast. Once again, you hear the bell. 10 seconds to finish without a deduction. Triple full, really, you know, it's not as engaging certainly as Kenzo. But he does a lot less, and inevitably, I think he's going to get less deductions. Well, his score coming up as we continue. Just underway. And Yul Muldauer from the University of Oklahoma, defending champion of this event, will be up as we roll along. Great opportunity for the fans of suburban Chicago to come out and see some top gymnasts as the road to Tokyo in 2020 is starting to unfold. They have held this American Cup since 1976, always such a prestigious event. And we are in the middle of the men's floor exercise here at the Sears Center Arena. Nestor Abad of Spain had a score of 13.433. And this is James Hall, the 22-year-old from Great Britain bronze medalist in the all-around at the European Championships a year ago. Great Britain has really come on strong, basically since they hosted the Olympic Games in London. He's part of a relatively new crop for GBR. Tell you what, that team, though, in Rio, Max Whitlock, winning two gold medals on floor exercise, pommel horse, and then getting one in the all around as well. A lot of people think the architect behind much of the men's success was Eddie Van Hoof, who was the head coach for GBR. There are problems all around the world, and he was relieved of his duties. Suspended in November of last year, and most recently dismissed as the head coach. Triple full. You know, not as difficult. I think it's really hard to compare anyone's routine now after watching Kenzo, but he was really great on most of the landings, a few hops here and there, but a little less difficulty, but much better execution. The start of his exercise. Everything about power on floor exercise. This is a double-double. So for perspective, Kenzo, not in his first pass, his second pass, did that with an extra twist. <laughs> but made it look so easy. Here's that triple full. Want to put, as Tim, you always say, an explanation mark on the end. <laughs> Try to stick that landing. I'm so accustomed to talking about Kenzo Shirai. I mean, he's the topic of everyone. You know, I saw people on Twitter this week saying, you know, they're coming to the American Cup, but really most excited to see him. We just call him Kenzo. He's, he is such an icon. He is famous by his first name alone, kind of like Nastia. 
<laughs> coming to the U.S. for the first time in his life. Yes, it is. You know, he said he was actually so excited to go to Target. <laughs> <laughs> he was he amazed he, by how big it was. He was. Walked around <laughs> all the aisles and was just couldn't, couldn't believe it. <laughs> Where do we take him to Costco? <laughs> really blow his mind. Yeah, you really make it in gymnastics when you go by the first name Olga, Nadia, Nastia. You don't hear anybody saying Tim. They're like, Tim who? <laughs> and now the score for James Hall of Great Britain, 13.766 falls in that yellow category in the middle. Yeah, pretty good for him though, actually. And that will take us to the Brazilian from Sao Paulo, Francisco Barreto Jr been on their world championship team five different times, but missed last year's Worlds in Montreal when he aggravated a back injury at a World Cup prior to the event. Ooh, held on to that. And he's a big guy, actually, for a gymnast. You know, when we talked to him earlier this week, that's exactly what he said. He said, you know, it's really difficult to me. You compare the other guys. I'm, I'm a lot taller, so I have to do a lot more strength, a lot more flexibility, a lot more work to yeah. try to keep up with them. No, absolutely. I would say he's a good 30 to even 40 pounds heavier than some of the very top gymnasts in the world. And that weight is not an asset in the sport of gymnastics. What can he use to his advantage? Well, on certain events, on vaulting, for example, if you learn how to channel that mass, it can be effective, but it's it's challenging. Great gymnast from Great Britain, Kristen Thomas, who is probably right around his size, one of the best vaulters, and really one of the main reasons why Great Britain was so successful in 2012, because of his vault. Big stumble on the landing, though. Yeah, and you know, he said he's not quite prepared to be at his best, still recovering and, and trying to get his full strength back, his full difficulty back, but this is a great step for him. He said, 10 years ago, I watched this competition and I dreamed for 10 years of competing. And this is a dream come true just to be here and compete at the American Cup. And here's that opening tumbling pass. A front handspring, double front in a tuck position, so a little bit easier than we've seen and, and huge deduction on the landing, but was able to pull it through. So you're required to do a skill like this. If you leave it out, then you lose five tenths of a point. This is actually called a Federchenko. He popularized it on the floor exercise. It's a little bit of pommel horse. And then his dismount, though, doesn't really get the rebound that he wanted. Under rotated, off to the side. Takes that step, and then he picks that foot up again. So, a score just a 12.7. And now from China, Sun Wei, the 22-year-old, making his third appearance at this American Cup. And he's potentially fantastic. Three-tenths step on that landing. He has not been a rock at this American Cup in the past. Nice double, double laid out, stuck cold. I think when they first sent Sunway to this competition, he was thought of as a B team. But as of late, I think he is chipping away and could be in contention. In a lot of ways, he's a more complete gymnast than a lot of athletes that I've seen from China. He just needs the consistency. Two and a half. Nicely done. So started with that big step on the first tumbling pass, but oh, uh, wow. Till the end after that, tremendous job from Sunway. This is very, very clean, this exercise. And one of the hopes that every gymnast has is that the judges differentiate. 
He had less errors in this routine. Sometimes, though, they kind of lump people together. And uh, I'm hopeful that this is in the green right here. It should be. And at the start of his routine, a double pike. So two flips. Look at that beautiful form just up until the very end on that landing. Again, have some deductions there, but just gorgeous. But this right here, look at double twisting, double laid out, great form, and bam! That was phenomenal. Once again, triple full at the end. Such a clean gymnast. Look at the legs, look at the toes. Just the smallest little hop. That's a one-tenth hop. If you take a hop that is greater than shoulder width apart on the men's side, it is three-tenths less, it's one-tenth. And the score, 14.433. It's a good one for Sunway of China. And we see one of those very few green demarcations to say his execution score. They got it right there. And the American up next, Yul Moldauer, the defending champion of this event from last year, an NCAA champion as well, and someone you watched grow up, Tim. Absolutely. He, his coach, Mark Williams, calls him a phenom, and he has watched this. This is awesome. Arabian double front, half out, and that is like money for Yul Moldauer, that landing. So he had... At the World Championships, his routine maximum start value score was actually middle of the pack, if that. But he is so clean, he was able to come away with a bronze medal at the 2017 Worlds because of landings like that. And he doesn't have errors, body position errors, leg form, another stuck landing. He's going to do the same dismount that we just saw Sun Wei do. Triple full. Right here. Small little hop. That was a big time routine. Wow. Reigning national champion in the all around and a good start in the American Cup. The score for Yul Moldauer of the U.S. coming up when we come back. Yul Moldauer, terrific start on the floor for the U.S. athlete and his score 14.666. Good to see Green. Now this is how his exercise developed a moment ago. And you know, I think this tumbling pass right here might have just been just beautiful form in the air, but this landing, probably the biggest amount of deduction in terms of execution and landing. The rest of the routine was just in insanely amazing. He does this all the time. Very difficult, Arabian double front and then halves it out. It is money in the bank for Yul Moldauer on that. And here's that dismount, a triple twist that we saw from a few of the other gymnasts, but look at his form in the air. Little soft knees towards the end, but just that tiny hop. And the standings after the first rotation, Yul Moldauer in second place, not by a whole lot. Kenzo Shirai, no surprise of Japan, leading the way after the floor. So just underway from just outside of Chicago at the American Cup. Warm-ups underway for the Pommel Horse. Rotation number two for the men at the Sears Center Arena just outside of Chicago. And that is the American who will be up first, Alan Bauer, sitting seventh after the first rotation here today. And yeah, that seems uh, way back. Obviously it is. There are only nine athletes competing. But this is what Alan does, is he'll do a good routine after good routine and let other people stumble a little bit, and at the end, he's right near the top. And, th and this is Pommel Horse that's coming up, so the potential for athletes to come off here is probably highest of any of the events. Dealing with a cut on his left hand that he said he was just gonna super glue because it kept opening up as he tries to deal with it and manage through the competition. Yeah, that's what the gymnasts do. It's amazing. 
I've asked doctors about it. All the doctors I've questioned say it's no problem. They do something similar to that, sometimes even in an ER. <laughs> Done that before, definitely uh, doesn't feel good when the super glue doesn't work. <laughs> so he will be up first. Born in Nebraska, where his mother was a big eight champion at the University of Nebraska. Grew up in Arizona. And just graduating from the University of Oklahoma last year. And I'll tell you what, he was captain of the OU team last year that won three national championships in a row. They'll be going for their fourth. They're currently ranked number one in the NCAA. A little bit of an intricate start. That scissor is actually named after Sam McCulloch from the United States. Has a very high level of difficulty. You're seeing a lot of gymnasts not do it anymore though because the judges are so strict on it. And this is his most critical element right there. And I'll tell you what, he does that so well. Pommel horse routines are marathons now. Got to have the energy to fly up to a handstand. I'll tell you what, this kid all day long, Alan Bauer. Like I said, doesn't have the most spectacular gymnastics, but if I were the head team coach, I can't envision a guy I'd want more on my team than Alan Bauer. And Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the pommel horse is kind of like the balance beam. You're physically prepared, but it's all about the mental game. Yeah, it really is. This is very intricate, that skill. As I said, a Mikulak scissor. And watch this right here. This is called a woo, where he's not just traveling across the horse from one end to the other, but he's also turning his body in a Russian, what we call it a Russian style. All you folks are familiar with all these crazy names from watching snowboarding in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> we got them too. He got a little big air there too, didn't he? Absolutely. Coming off the lip of the pipe. <laughs> well, I'll, t I'll tell you what though, for him to be able to go up to handstand so well at that end, at the end of that routine, my guess is we're going to see a number of athletes who are going to struggle at the end, but he didn't. So 13.966 for Alan Bauer, who again was seventh after the first rotation on the floor. Mark Williams, head coach of OU, shaking his head at the deductions there. Over two points in execution errors, and I agree. I just, sometimes I, I, I just don't understand why they are so strict. Nice scissor right, flew up to a handstand on that one. When you stay on one pommel like this right here, very difficult. He'll now turn his body, oh boy. A little bit off, you see him hit the pommel with his legs, that's a deduction. It's a deduction when he obviously splits his legs. Once again, we'll see if these athletes are in good condition. And that is exactly what I was talking about right there. Struggles to get up to that handstand. And that, that's a serious deduction, at least a half a point off. Now tied for fourth after the first rotation, the 25-year-old from Berlin. Flies up to this handstand position. You can't show any pike of the hips or, or closing of them. And when you are on a single pommel, this is some of the most difficult stuff. You don't have a lot of room. Look at this hand right there. It's almost off the edge of the pommel. He has to do that because he's transitioning into another skill and the right hand as well. Off the top of the pommels, you just don't have enough room. That was great. He's traveled. And he's already got some leg separation on the travel before it. He kind of clipped the 
pommel with his legs. And every single circle that he does, his toes are a little bit overlapped. The pommel score for Felice but right there, that's where he really struggled. Tim, as you mentioned, big deduction. You think towards the end, right when you're about to finish the dismount, you can't give up till you're all the way finished and on the ground. Well, no surprise to see this man in first place after the floor, Kenzo Shirai of Japan. What do we expect from him on the pommel horse? Well, nothing like we saw on floor exercise. And I'll tell you what, he was anticipating leading this competition by over a point after the first event. He really gave away some, some of the advantage that he has. And this is bad right there. Off balance, he's not known for being a top pommel horse worker. He's, he's able to survive it, but right there, a full point for coming off the apparatus. He definitely finished the skill, but before he fell, before he was having deductions as well. And now, just the sheer mental challenge of regrouping, getting back at it. You're allowed 30 seconds to begin your exercise again, and that was seemed precariously close to that. This is another gigantic error. Wow. And he, what he did right there, that has no value at all. So he got no difficulty points for that skill, so he's going to have to repeat it again. And he doesn't. I think these are the routines as an athlete that you just want it to hurry up and be over. Yeah. If I have, Crowd if I could give him a little bit of advice, I'd say don't look up at the scoreboard, Kenzo, <laughs> after this, because a good fight at the end, and it makes you feel a little better for about an instant. And then you remember you came off twice, and some people criticized me for saying it, but this was a disaster. So he's on one pommel, picks up into circles, and he's going to do four different elements on one pommel. That's the most you're allowed to do in a row to get difficulty, and he is off, way off right there. When you see the hips close to the pommels, and you see him lift, his hips up in the back, there is no way. And that's, that's dangerously close. I think they're gonna give it to him once again. We're not completing that, but this is a, a traveling skill and he is just, he's picking his hips up as he's doing the second half of his circle, not remaining in a single body position straight one unit and because of that his shoulders start basically careening back and forth such a mental game too you come off twice and you know everybody's watching you you have the spotlight just to stay engaged in the routine has to be so hard and yeah. then you know you have four more <laughs> events and routines yeah. to go after this too and yeah, nowhere to hide anybody else in the world that floor score would be a blessing but for kenzo as i stated that was a, a very big disappointment. And this one is, this one's gonna be tough. He goes to rings next, which is not a great event for him. And then the last half of his gymnastics today, vaulting parallel bars and high bar, stronger than his first half. Now, no surprise to see the red, 11.1 for Japan's Kenzo Shirai. Wow over four points in deduction. And tell you what, he just, uh, he basically took himself out of this. I mean, all of the top guys are going to have to really falter at this point for him to have even remote shot. And boy, how often have we seen this at the American Cup on Pommel Horse?
Death by Pommels. And you also mentioned before that it's so early in the international season. Some of the collegiate gymnasts have the advantage of being in their season. They've been competing regularly, but some of these others are just getting started. Absolutely. Yoel Moldauer has competed six weekends in a row already. Another scissor to a handstand. Now he's trying something that's really tricky stuff. And it's going to come up. Maybe he is opting not to do it. Just traveling across the horse. And here it is right here. He's going to try to go up and come back down. He manages the hardest part extremely well, coming back down from a handstand into those flared circles. But that is a press to a handstand right there. And he's got a whole heck of a lot of deductions as well. If Alan Bauer had a little more than two points, that should be three and a half. So what you got to do on this scissor is you got to fly up to a handstand, show no strength. And he goes over, steps down to the end, which are huge deductions. And then he falls off the horse. <laughs> so really, what he's got is just all kinds of deductions. Going up to a handstand again, he pauses, I would say, close to a stop, which if they call it a stop, it's a full point deduction. That he does well. The coming down into circles. I watched him do this in training, and I saw him do it one time where I thought it was worth it. But right here... The dismount, as I said, you're exhausted, especially when you have been struggling in the exercise. And not to pile on, but that's exactly what the judges are going to do. Well, it was outside the top five after the first rotation, not really enhancing his cause on the pommel horse. The Spaniard from Madrid who injured his clavicle just before the Spanish National Championships last year and was forced to miss that event. He's torn his ACL on a couple of occasions, three years apart. So certainly more than his fair share of injuries during the course of his career. Yeah, I really like this, this young man. No question about it. He has dealt with a lot of adversity. Re tore his ACL in 2011. Re tore it 2014. My son is going through the exact same thing. I mean, this is a sport where your body is really your temple. And to come back from an injury in other sports, sometimes you can manage to a degree. But in this sport, there's nowhere to go if you're not healthy. No, absolutely. And his score, 11.6, three and a half points of deductions. Exactly what I said. If they took over two points for Alan Bauer, that was three and a half. And they got it right. Now James Hall of Great Britain. He is the... Pommel Horse champion from the 2017 British Championship. So hopefully he can turn this around here for this event. And he's he's good on horse. He's a little bit tight. His hips are kind of close to the pommels, but I really think the key is once again going to be the dismount. He's working well. Is he going to have the energy to be able to fly up to that handstand? Just about as well as he can do. Little struggle, but that is a hit routine for James Hall. So James Hall of Great Britain, his score coming up as we continue with Yul Moldauer of the U.S. from the American Cup. American Yule Moldauer sitting second after the first rotation, warming up on the pommel. The man ahead of him after the floor exercise, Kenzo Shirai, has already gone on pommel and really had a disastrous routine. He did, and Yule just needs to stay on the horse. Absolutely. He can get a little bit ugly even, and it'll be all right. He'll be right in there. It's not just Yule, though. Sun Wei from China also in the mix, and he's tremendous on pommel horse. But Ewell, he's a little bit under the weather. The day he flew in here on Thursday, had a fever, got some sniffles now. And the pommel horse routine he's doing is much more difficult than he has done in the past. He's competed at a, 
a handful of times, but when you do those flare skills, especially the way he does it, and we'll see this shortly, he does them so big and so aggressive that they can be exhausting, and that he has added a whole bunch of flare work. It's great to watch. It's exciting when it goes well, and he'll get a great score for it, but he's got to be able to survive and then have the energy once again to fly up on that dismount. Now, this is the Brazilian coming up next, the 28-year-old Francisco Barreto Jr. Sitting in ninth after the first rotation. James Hall, meantime, who we saw a moment ago from Great Britain with a score of 14.166 on the pommel. So, Tim, on, on an event like this, we talked about his height, him being a little bit taller than all the other guys. How does this, does this help him or hurt him on the pommel horse here? Well, you know, I, I think that the height isn't the issue, but his bulk is the issue. His, his legs are heavy, you know, so those legs, he's got to swing them around, and basically that momentum's got to hold him up, and that's what makes it very, very difficult. Good fight there, though. Actually capitalizes on a lot of the very same moves, and that was, that was a strong exercise for him. You know, I'm gonna be very curious to see how the judges handle this because, you know, throughout the routine, every circle is supposed to be perfect and supposed to be wide and look light. And, you know, he's got a little form everywhere. And it picks his hips up a lot of times. Once again, you see the legs coming apart. If they come apart, go back together, and then come apart again, those are two separate deductions. Slightly unconventional dismount. He does all of these turning skills. They're variations of a Russian, and this is a a Russian dismount, little bit low on that. That's supposed to go higher than that. Doesn't need to go to a handstand, but that's a hit set for him. He'll, he's going to take it, but. Multi-time gold medalist at the South American Championships. Really nice guy. Had a chance to talk with him. He made the Olympic final on high bar in his home country of Brazil. Came away with fifth, and he said a lot of people might think that that was a bad thing, but being in the top five in the world, he thought it was, it was a wonderful prize. And I think after all the injuries that he has had, he also told us he is just so happy to actually be here at the American Cup, said he's not quite at his best, at his strongest, but just truly excited to be here. Not quite sure we got the whole answer from him but basically he said he only started back again in, in January, January. Yeah. yeah which a score 13.466 with just over two points of deductions and now Sun Wei sitting in third after the first rotation very much in the mix and now here he is a guy who won this pommel horse at the Olympic test event prior to the 2016 games in Rio he does two of those risky swings to handstand right at the top. That one was great. A little slow on the come down. Another one right there. Very well done. We were talking about Fabricio and not having that extended body. Oh, boy. Way off balance. He's got a beautiful circle, the position, and yikes, I cannot believe he stayed on the horse. That was incredible. His shoulders were so off balance, so far forward. Here is his dismount. No problem at all. Flies up to a handstand, but that was a roller coaster ride that he didn't enjoy. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, Tim, you talked about him being on that B team for China, and as he's gotten better, he now feels like he is, you know, said the top seven or eight gymnast. And when we look ahead towards Tokyo in 2020, the teams continue to just get smaller and smaller. But that doesn't bode well for him. You know, they're going to go back home, and they're going to see this was nerves, you know, because he's absolutely capable of doing this flawlessly. 
Nice, good stuff at the beginning. Right up to a handstand. His hips are open. Watch another one right here. Don't want to bend at your hips. Needs longer socks, though. <laughs> little bit off. Started great. And then he gets a little too far forward and legs just flying apart. The score for Francisco Fernando and the score, 13.733. What do you think of them? Well, you know, they, they did it so far, on Pommel Horse at least, they have been dead on. You know, he had so many things that he does so well, but then he has those little errors, or not little errors, his legs were flying apart, what am I saying? So here is all that flare work I'm talking about. He's been doing this for a while, and this one right here. But this right here is all new, traveling from one end of the horse to the other. And you see how big it is. It's exhausting. He's got to do these one pommel skills. This is excellent for Yule. A big time routine and there. Absolutely, your leader after two with a big cushion, Yule Moldauer. Kenzo Shirai of Japan was the only one ahead of him after the floor. He really stumbled on the pommel horse, and now Yule Moldauer taking advantage, stepping in here. And he just doesn't just do these flares. They are huge and elegant and beautiful. Look at this, he's turning his body the opposite way that he is circling. When you do that, it's called a spindle. And then he'll travel facing forwards from one end of the horse to the other. He's been doing this sequence for a while. After all of that, you got to get up on one pommel. And as I said, that's the really tricky stuff. And he's tired. I don't care what he says. He's tired at this point, but so well conditioned. So Tim, I want to know, when you competed, what was it that you were saying to yourself right before an important pommel horse routine like Yule just had? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. The one thing that I liked about pommel horse was that there's always at least one hand on the piece of equipment. So if you're quick enough, if you make adjustments quick enough, that you can make the adjustment. And his score, a 14. Point zero six six. Point and a half of deductions. But that's a big exercise for Yule. Absolutely. And now our final man on the pommel horse, Petro Paknyuk of Ukraine, who led us off on the floor in rotation one. A 26-year-old from Kiev. Also does those handstands. Now look at his hips. You see how his hips were closed? We call that a pike in gymnastics. You're not allowed to do that. Those incur deductions. Got a pretty open circle. Could be a little bit more, but... And this right here is a deduction. He should be more square. He should be facing exactly forwards. And he's a little sideways. Oh, boy. And he's going to do... A Russian dismount as well, that way too low. I would say that could be, that's five tenths off for the height right there. All right, so that takes us through the end of the second rotation. Yul Moldauer, defending champion from last year, is the leader. After two rotations this year, a terrific performance on the pommel horse, vaulting. The 21-year-old from the University of Oklahoma to the top of the standings here in Chicago. After two rotations on the men's side, two Americans in the top four, led by Yul Moldauer, the defending champion from last year, leading the way. Terrific performance on the pommel horse just moments ago. And he's the top of the standings with Sunway of China in second place as we move on to the women. And the reigning world champion, 16 years of age from the U.S., Morgan Hurd, getting set to warm up on the vault. And what a breakout year she had. 
unbelievable. Winning that all-around title, but you know, a lot of people seem to have already forgotten that the number one athlete going into that competition was Reagan Smith from the United States. She went down with an injury like moments before the competition was going to begin in the warm-up gym prior to them marching out onto the floor. But I have to say, Morgan did a fabulous job stepping in without her teammate there, her very first world championships. Acted like absolutely no big deal, I got this. Didn't even react to the pressure, the expectations, came away with a gold medal in the all-around competition. And you think about what she had to follow. The U.S. team had won the past six world and Olympic titles, so that pressure was on her shoulders. She delivered, but for her and her mother, who she still lives with these days back in Delaware, they said that it really wasn't that surprising because she does have a poise and a maturity that seems beyond her years. Yeah, she does. But And I'll tell you what, she is just a joy to talk with, has so much personality, is fun, is always smiling. But know, she I, can be fierce as well, though. I got to spend a little bit of time with her a few weeks ago in Texas and I was just so surprised about how mature she was. You know, I've gotten to know her over the years, but just spending time away from the gym, I, I thought she was my age. I thought she maybe even acted older than I did. And she's so smart, such a hard worker. I've been personally a huge fan of her since first time we saw her at the Nasi Lukin Cup about four years ago. Yeah, she won me over. She charmed me for sure. Isn't it interesting, though, because you can still have poise and maybe a sense of maturity, but it doesn't always translate into performance because the pressure, the moment, the environment, it can still get to you, but she's found a way to deliver. She absolutely has, and I think that's exactly what she showed the entire world just a few months ago at those world championships. Having no major world championships, Olympic Games experience, she delivered when it counted. Yeah, but, you know, the thing about Morgan is she will readily admit that if there's an area that she needs to be better at, she needs to be more consistent. And not just consistent, but those landings. She does great, difficult skills, but sometimes struggle to keep, struggles to keep it under control, especially in the competition. My Murakami. Double twisting Yurchenko. Very nice. Just a hop back on the landing. She was actually fourth in the all-around at those recent worlds and really, really knocked herself off the top spot. She was, she won the qualification and then in her third event on balance beam came off. But that was very nice, very clean, right in the middle. And the Japanese men's team have just been on top for years and finally the Japanese women's team is emerging but this fault, beautiful execution, spots the landing. Fourth in the all around and on floor exercise, the gold medal for her. And Murakami gets green. That's a good score, 14.6 on the vault. Actually seeing more Yurchenko double twists at this competition than I can remember in a long time. We'll see one here as well. Fabian Brito, the 15-year-old Brazilian junior national champion, making her senior-level debut at this American Cup in the U.S. If she has an issue, she can do a lot of different things, but some of her form is, is a little bit messy at times. Just like right there. Not too bad at the beginning of the vault, but towards the end, the feet kind of cross a little bit. But I'll tell you what, in training, we've been watching her, and it's, it's hard to see her do a lot. We really, some athletes, they come out, and it's like routine after routine, and she was, she was being careful. But watch right here. So look at the form in her legs right from the beginning, split legs in here. Legs apart, feet apart, little bent knees. She has some technical errors as well. She really doesn't get off, completely off the table. So as her arms go back, she should jump with her arms and not start twisting at all. It's a little bit too soon. But in slow motion, it's 
and the judges are trained to be able to see these. You know, th there were a lot of deductions there. Uh, just over one point of deductions, and now Mao Yi of China, the 18-year-old, who came home with a team bronze medal from the Olympic Games in Rio back in 2016. And the reason she was on that team primarily was because of this event, vaulting and on-floor exercise. The Chinese have long been known to be phenomenal on balance beam and the uneven bars, but have struggled historically on the leg power events. She's one of just a handful that they could use at the Olympic Games that is capable of this vault that we have just seen from the last two gymnasts. It's a double twisting Yurchenko, but I'll tell you what, in warmups, yikes. She had a very, very low landing and twisting into the ground, which is a big no-no. Oh, oh, geez, and that was bad. Oh, boy. Oh. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, geez. Let's move over to the men and the rings. Nestor Abad, a Spaniard here. And just for some reference, Kenzo Shirai, only a 13.7 on the still rings. He already competed. But from here on out, he's got really strong exercises. Alabad, the three-time member of Spain's national world championship team, also went to the Olympics back in 2016 in Rio. Third rotation for the men here. Still rings, really, if you are a top performer, is, is all about brute strength. I mean, you just have got to be so strong. Very nice position there. This one is a little bit more tired, so has a slight arch in his back, which will be a little bit of a deduction. Nice swinging skills. But you should swing up to those strength parts, and you should absolutely freeze. There should be no movement at all. Doing a good job so far. Double twisting double. A hop backwards, but overall a pretty strong routine. It's trailing by over three and a half points coming into this rotation on the rings after both the floor and the pommel horse today. So they are looking for absolute perfect position. This one right here was the first element he did. Just a little bit of a a sway in his back, and on the second one, he's more tired, and you see a more pronounced arch of the back. Maybe his shoulders even got a little bit below the rings, which you're not supposed to do. But all survivable. This is, you know, overall a very good routine. The dismount, two flips, two twists, one piece of air, small hop back on the landing. Uh, tore his ACL back in 2014 for the second time at a World Cup event and surgery. Came back later that year. He had promised his father that he would quit smoking if he won the Spanish <laughs> National Championships. He, in fact, did achieve that, and it was his final cigarette. Yes. He's yeah. kicked the habit. And here he has a score of 13.733, a point and a half of deductions on the ranks. As James Hall, third after the second rotation, up next. And he just wants to stay consistent. Nice start. It's 
called an Azarian to a cross position. And that one kind of degraded. That position started good, but he had movement on it. This one, very nice. You have to do different kinds of strengths. You have to do a swing to a strength. Right there, another one. You know, I think I say this every single time, but watching anybody on the rings, they make it look so easy. But it is anything but that. You also need to do a swing to a handstand. That's a giant, which he just did. Tell you what, he has been getting the job done today. Now the 22-year-old bronze medalist from the European Championships last year. Actually born in Australia, but lives just about 40 miles southeast of London these days, competing for Great Britain. So here he is swinging. Very intricate moves, two in a row, and then let's see if he freezes. This is in slow motion, so that's pretty darn good. You see very little change in body position. You're doing a great job today, I'll tell you what. Nice look in the air as well. You know, a lot of people can do the double-double, but he looks classy while doing it. So in regular speed, this is what the judges are seeing. Nice swing, as I said, and then bam, don't move. Pretty good. Well, has not competed at a World Championships or an Olympic Games to this point in his career. Firmly has his sights set on Tokyo 2020, as everyone does here today in Chicago. And a score, 14.033. It's a good number, absolutely. So as we continue in this third rotation for the men on the rings, this is the Brazilian Francisco Barreto Jr., a 28-year-old, is just outside the top five after the first two rotations. Unable to compete at last year's Worlds in Montreal because of a back injury that was sustained in a World Cup just prior to those World Championships. And Tim, as you mentioned earlier, he told us earlier this week he just started training again in January. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around how that's possible to be here Beginning of March, might not be as full difficulty, but to be able to compete in the all-around competition here at the American Cup is pretty impressive. And like on Pommel Horse, you know, he's got big muscles, but sometimes, you know, it, the mass that he has, he's got to hold that. And when you're big on rings, not just upper body, but legs as well as he is, it makes it hard, but. Another clean routine for him, a good job. At the top of the routine, he ha certainly had two strength elements that definitely had deductions. They weren't perfect positions, and he arrived at a pretty good position, but then his, that position degraded. You have to hold it for two seconds, a full two seconds, and that entire time you're supposed to remain in that position, and he didn't. How tough is it? And just in terms of fatigue for someone that big during the course of a routine. Oh, it's, it's really hard. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, we were talking to him, as we said earlier, about being a big gymnast. And he says, yes, it's so hard. But I just, I love gymnastics so much. I just, I just really want to do it. I mean, the best guys in the world, top all-arounders, they, as I said, 30 pounds less than him at least. All right, his score of 13.3. And coverage of this American Cup now set to continue over on NBC. So join us there as the proceedings roll along from Hoffman Estates, Illinois, just outside of Chicago.
Hello, everyone. Liam McHugh in our NBC Sports studio. We'll get you out to Chicago for live coverage of the American Cup Gymnastics in just a moment. Today's competition takes place during a tumultuous time for USA Gymnastics. In January, Larry Nasser, a former doctor for USA Gymnastics and Michigan State University, was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison on multiple counts of criminal sexual conduct. More than 150 women spoke at his sentencing, including several Olympic champions, with many of their comments critical of USA Gymnastics' handling of the Nasser affair and its overall culture. Shortly after the trial, under pressure from the United States Olympic Committee, the entire USA Gymnastics Board of Directors resigned. An interim board has recently been appointed, with six independent members added earlier this week. On Wednesday, USOC CEO Scott Blackman also resigned, citing ongoing health issues resulting from prostate cancer. Also last month, the women's national team coordinator, Valeri Lukin, resigned, citing stress from the present climate leaving the program without its de facto head coach. Lucan was not named in any of the lawsuits against USA Gymnastics. The process to find his replacement is underway. Andrea Joyce is in Chicago with more. It's been three months since Carrie Perry took over as president and CEO of USA Gymnastics. Now, they declined our request for an interview with her here in Chicago. She did, however, release an open letter to the gymnastics community this weekend. In it, Perry addressed some of the major concerns facing the organization, including athlete safety. She also released a statement to NBC saying, quote, the best way to honor our athletes is to ensure that we do everything we can to prevent this from happening again by making bold decisions and holding ourselves to the highest standards of care. You can read the entire statement on NBCSports.com. Meantime, current national team members are determined to continue pursuing their dreams in the midst of all of this. Recently, they took to social media to voice support for the victims and to express their resolve to move forward. A picture of unity with the hashtag WST, we stand together. I spoke to Morgan Hurd, the U.S. headliner at this American Cup. She told me it was very important for her to be part of this message. Tokyo 2020 is only two and a half years away. These are uncertain times, but Morgan is laser focused on this early step to the Olympics, the American Cup. And we'll have that competition for you coming up. The Sears Center Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, about 30 miles northwest of Chicago. We're on this first weekend in March. It is the 43rd edition of the American Cup, the most important international competition held in the United States each year. American Yul Moldauer is the defending champion for the men from this event. He's also the leader today after two rotations. Two Americans in the top four at the moment. Alongside Moldauer, Alan Bauer in fourth place. Steve Schlanger with the Olympic gold medalist, Tim Daggett, Nastia Lukin, Andrea Joyce is also with us. And Moldauer, a terrific start to the defense of his crown from a year ago. Yeah, this he is a, sorry, this is a great spot that he finds himself in. Floor exercise was his first event, absolutely fantastic. Almost halfway through the competition here and has a great lead. Yeah, he had his breakout really came at the American Cup in the gymnastic circle in the United States. Everybody has been talking about this kid since he was a little boy. Such an unbelievable talent. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and just really an elegant gymnast. He won the American Cup last year, won the national title in the all around went to the World Championships, and I was in Montreal, and I'll tell you what, there was a buzz about Yul Moldauer. So clean, his execution, people were coming up to me. It was like, wow, where did this kid come from? I say, I've been, I've been watching him since he was a little boy, but just a really classy looking gymnast, and he deals with the pressure typically very well. I got to talk to him earlier this week and spend some time with him. He showed me the background of his iPhone, the logo of Tokyo 2020. Did not make the team for Rio, and that's made him even more motivated, hungry, already preparing for the next Olympic Games. Was actually fifth all around at the final Olympic trials. He's so light, and so he makes these 
strength parts look effortless. You see he opens his hand right there. He does that to telegraph to the judges, I am not on my wrists at all, which would make the lever arm shorter and make it easier. Does it here as well. Tremendous swinger as well. And then right back to that cross, just freezing. Doesn't have the most difficulty in the world, but certainly one of the cleanest gymnasts that you'll ever see. And he can stick too. Watch this, double, double. Oh! Yikes! That is really good news for Yule and really bad for everybody else. On a roll here just outside Chicago. We'll get his score in a moment. Meantime, over on the vault, this is the American Miley O'Keefe, who turned 16 years of age earlier this week. She'll do a double twisting, laid out Yurchenko. And that was good. That was a great start right here on the vault. Good form in the air, got some great height, and let's look right here. So we're going to look for extension right off the vault. Little bit of toes in the air crossed over each other, so that'll be some deduction. But great landing, you see the chest up. But I'll tell you what, you never know how an athlete is going to perform until they're in that situation. This American Cup, it's on podium. It's obviously being televised live. It is one of the events that every kid that is in this competition, certainly the Americans, they dream of winning an Olympic gold medal, a world championships, a national title, and they want to be American Cup champion. She rose to the pressure right there. And a green color is a good score, as you see, 14.6. Less than a point of deductions, and this is the color-coded scoring system that just helps simplify what the judges are thinking. Green is good, red is a poor score, and yellow is kind of everything in between. There are two components to the score. One starts at a 10, and that's what we just showed you right there, deductions. The other part is the difficulty, what they do, and that's additive. The more you do, the higher your potential score. So Tim, as you mentioned, this is her first year as a senior athlete, was of course the junior national champion last year. And if we put her scores roughly, would have placed her second in the senior division. Well, here is the American Morgan Hurd, reigning world champion. She was set to go on the vault a little while ago, but then had to wait because of an injury to the athlete who preceded her, and it caused a delay of about 15 minutes. Mao Yi suffered an injury on a fall coming off the vault, has been taken to a local hospital. It was so long, they had to give the athletes another warm-up period and Morgan was first up and this is her vault that double twist really nice good power a big hop on the landing but overall pretty darn good but you know Tim that's exactly what she told us all week as she said I feel like my difficulty is there but that's what I want to work on my execution my landing specifically on every single event including this one right here Good form in the air. Little bit of a pike down towards the end, but that was a big hop. How tough is it to wait through that kind of a delay, something that's rather unusual? Oh, very unusual. And, you know, this is, of course, she's competed at the World Championships, but the American Cup is a big competition, a lot of pressure, especially now coming in as the reigning world champion. But she handled it so well. And, you know, not just, not just the weight, but, you know, it was a, <laughs> a pretty significant injury that Mao Yi sustained very scary to watch and i'm hoping none of these athletes were watching when it happened and now back over to the rings and the men you'll mold our a score of 14.3 so he has wow. seized upon some momentum here today at the american cup i believe he's the only athlete on the men's side that has had three scores that are all in the green Floor exercise was great. His second event, Pommel Horse, tremendous and a really beautiful 
routine on rings, capped it off with that stuck landing. He was seventh all around at the World Championships, but earlier today on the floor exercise, two and a half twist, small little hop. That was probably the biggest area in the whole exercise. Triple pull at the end, and just an teensy, teensy hop forward. On pommel horse, huge difficulty. Watch this, he'll turn his body the opposite way. Those are called spindles, and after a grueling routine, just zooms up to a handstand. We saw a lot of athletes falter on that. Come on now, let's go. And now his fellow American, Fourth after the last rotation, Alan Bauer was second at the U.S. Championships a year ago in the all-around, taking the silver medal. And he said when he got the call, actually an email to compete here, he was so surprised and said, you know, I may not be getting too many of these chances, so I am going to soak up all this experience. And actually, he is hoping to go to med school and was supposed to be interviewing this week in Denver, but he got the invitation and he talked to his coach, Mark Williams, and they decided to call Denver and he got it rescheduled to be able to be here. This is a good routine, but you see the bent elbows right there. And right off the top, he had some strength parts and another bit of a struggle in the handstand. The hold positions weren't great. A nice dismount, double-double, but a three-tenth step on the landing. He has been tremendous today. Great floor, great promo horse. That was not as good as he can do. Well, a product of the University of Oklahoma. He'll turn 23 years of age this coming Wednesday, and his score coming up when we come back. The American Cup is brought to you by USA Gymnastics Safe Sport. Together we can. And by the National Gymnastics Foundation Athlete Assistance Fund. We are just northwest of Chicago in Huffman Estates, Illinois. And after three rotation on the men's side, it is the American Yule Moldauer trying to defend his title at this event from a year ago. He's the leader over Sunway of China, James Hall of Great Britain, and Moldauer's fellow American, Alan Bauer, who was down there in fourth. Meanwhile, on the women's side, it is Miley O'Keefe, the American, at the top of the standings after their first rotation on the vault. The reigning world champion, Morgan Hurt of the U.S., not too far off the pace, though. She is in third. And we welcome you to the Sears Center Arena here in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Steve Schlanger flanked by the Olympic champions, Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin. And now that the Winter Olympic Games have been put to bed, it's Tokyo 2020 on the clock, the Summer Olympics up next, and the path to Tokyo really is starting to take shape with a very prestigious international event like this. It absolutely is, and what an amazing experience, both for Morgan and Miley and the rest of the field. But this is exactly what they are getting ready for the World Championships later this year. But Tokyo, of course, is on all of their minds, and this is a great preparation for that. Hey, I'll tell you what, uh, so far, Yule Moldauer has been spectacular. We're halfway through the men's competition. He has three quarters of a point lead over the second gymnast. He really just needs to stay clean the rest of the way, and he's gonna win two in a row. And this is a great field. Kenzo Shirai, one of the top gymnasts, floor exercise world champion, vaulting world champion, a bronze medalist at the last Worlds. You know, it, it's a good field. He has struggled so far. Last year was really the breakout year for Yul Moldauer. Not only did he win this American Cup, he also won an NCAA championship and really burst onto the scene and now taking his first steps towards the next Olympic Games, as we see Kenzo Shirai of Japan, who's in seventh after the third rotation, now on vault. Started strong on the floor in the first rotation, was the leader after that, but then a disastrous pommel horse in rotation number two has really dropped him in the standings. And not good on rings as well, but here is where he can jump back. He is tremendous. As I said, he's the reigning world champ on this event. Very clean. He's actually capable of adding 
a half twist to that vault. And that's one of his six elements that are named after him. It may not look that hard, but that is a really complicated vault executed great. Now Morgan Hurd on bars. Nice handstand position. Beautiful form. Now she'll do another release and connect down to low. She was a little close on that first one, but dealt with it extremely well. She talked to us about being better at the sticks. Do one more inside skill, gets a lot of points, a little shy on that handstand. And a little bit of a hop on the landing. A solid routine, gonna keep her in the game, but she can be a little better. She absolutely can, but this is also a new routine. She's had some upgrades pretty much on every event since the World Championships. And what a great way to start off her season, to come out here, test out those new skills. And that's something she is so great at, her form. So take a look, toes pointed, knees straight. So beautiful, as she said, really wanted to work on those landings. But this release, as you said to him, a little bit close, but was able to connect it into what we call a pack salto. Beautiful skill. And that, that's veteran-like right there, because that was really close and didn't have a good swing coming into it. But you'd never notice. This is the dismount right here. Now look, look at the handstand position. These judges are brutal on that, and that hand goes down. That's at least three-tenths of a point off. She connects it, which gives her more, but look right here. That's what she's trying to get better at. She needs to be a little more patient with her landings. She wears glasses because she says contact lenses really collect all the dust that builds up. And so she prefers the glasses, but it's really a rare sight. You it, never see someone competing in glasses. It's very, very unusual. Yeah, she, she told, I talked to her about it, you know, when she was first coming up, and she said it, the chalk, it just made my eyeballs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and her score, 14.2. Got it. Just and inside of two points of deductions. And you see that yellow right there. And, you know, as I said, you know, these judges, they are going to be really critical and she had those handstands in the routine where she's not exactly vertical. They take for that. And the German Elizabeth Seitz, who is sixth after the first rotation, next up on bars. The 24-year-old was born in Heidelberg, silver medalist at the all-around in the European Championships from a few years back. I'll tell you what, though. She had the most dreaded position at the Olympic Games she was fourth on the uneven bars, just barely out of the medals. I know how that feels. <laughs> I was fourth on high bar, and uh, that kind of never goes away. Picking up speed for her dismount. And that was a good routine, difficult, but a few places here and there, some leg separation, some form, hop on the landing. As you said, Tim, that is what the judges are going to be taking deduction. They will not look past any of that. But Nastia, you know, in the past, she has done much more difficult exercises than this. She's capable of more. Absolutely. And again, I think as we've talked about, this competition is kind of that kickoff to their season. So maybe not quite ready. Little bit of those flexed feet as she passes that bar. And another thing the judges are looking for, when they do the skills where they're flying in the air, the releases, they want to see flight on those. They want to see a lot of height. That one was pretty good. The transition to low, nicely done. And here's that dismount. So again, looking for good height in the air. And when you are landing, the judges are not only looking for how many steps or hops you take, but where your shoulders are. So not too bad. Now on even bars, Britain, and the score 14.2, 1.9 of deductions for the German Elizabeth Seitz. Identical deductions to Morgan Hurd. And now Kelly Sim, fifth place after rotation number one from Great Britain. Won a team bronze medal back at the World Championships in 2015. Mainly just did this event last year. 
Little low on that handstand, and she was hoping to connect it to that skill. Not a deduction for not connecting it, but she will lose a little bit of bonus there. And that third place team that you were speaking about, that was a huge accomplishment for Team GB. Asking her about the American Cup, she said, it's a dream competition. I've watched it streamed for so many years. A good dismount, a little bit messy in the air, and the slight hop backwards, but some of the handstands are gonna certainly come to get her. Now she said she just hasn't competed much over the last few years. How difficult is it to come into a tough premier competition like this and find your A game? Yeah, it absolutely is. And she kept telling us that this arena is just so massive. And here's that <laughs> handstand right there. You see very low, very low. Could be up to five tenths deduction. And I as, think so, yeah. As I said, she was going to try to connect it into this skill. So she just lost some tenths in the difficulty score. So didn't get the bonus for connecting those two scores. We'll get deduction for that low handstand. And the dismount right here, gaining a little bit of speed, which is critical. And like I said, you see the legs apart from this angle. You really see that a lot, but you know what? The judges can't see that. We're looking at it directly straight on. They are looking from the side, and it's very hard to see that. But she had a little bit of knees and flexed feet in the air. And interesting that judging is getting harsher, it seems, every year, and especially after the Olympic Games in Rio. Yeah, I, I just don't know why. they. I mean, 2.334 off, you know, for a routine that didn't have a major break. I, I, I don't know why they want to make it harder and harder. I, I don't get it. Now, Miley O'Keefe in a good spot, tied for first. After the first rotation here, just outside of Chicago. Had a very nice start with double twisting Yurchenko. Little short on that handstand, but was able to connect it. Beautiful. And this is critical right here. Struggled a little bit. Tricky combination. Another release. Oh, boy. Way too close to the bar. And that does not feel good. Well, fantastic recovery from that. You know, sometimes on these release skills, and I have to, have to tell you that I've been there before, you sometimes get a little bit too nervous, want to make sure that you're going to catch the bar, and that is why you might pull in a little bit, but that is a big no-no. And while she's a two-time junior national champion, this is her senior level debut. So on the big stage for the first time. Beautiful pack salto. One of my favorite skills. Immediately back up to the high bar. Beautiful combination. These, this is what makes the uneven bar so difficult is when you do Skills in a row, without any extra swings, without those extra giants in between. But right here, look how she just holds on to the bar way too long. Surprised she was even able to hold on to that and catch the bar. But that is a huge deduction for doing that. And she takes an extra swing. Her dismount was beautiful. It's an Arabian double front, little unorthodox, a great landing. And unfortunately, too, her coach touched her. After that as well, we'll incur some deduction. So Miley O'Keefe will get her score when we bring you back to the American Cup. Miley O'Keefe with over two and a half points of deductions on the uneven bars, a score of 13.233 for the 16-year-old from Las Vegas. And now over to the 21-year-old, Yule Muldauer from the University of Oklahoma, the leader after three rotations here at the Sears Center Arena. By three quarters of a point, he doesn't have the hardest vault in the competition. Both Kenzo Shirai and Sun Wei do a more difficult one. Yule is going to do it's a Sukahara-style vault named after the great Japanese gymnast, but he'll add two and a half twists to it. 
Oh, man. I'll tell you what, he just makes it look so darn too easy because that is not easy to do. It's relatively a blind landing, and he just finds the floor in just the smallest little hop. And now this is Brooklyn Moores of Canada, a 17-year-old who made her international debut at the World Championships a year ago. Was fifth. Oh, boy. This is struggling. Huge, huge mistake right off the top. Had such a breakout world. Her sister, Victoria, was a super successful gymnast for Canada. Competed at the American Cup multiple times. Brooklyn says she remembers watching her sister and now to be able to be here is so great. And that was unfortunately not a great routine for Brooklyn, but where she really is great is on the floor exercise. Absolutely stunning. The artistry, the grace, the beauty. Absolutely. Just, just gorgeous stuff, but right off the top, she's just way over on one of these handstands. So right here, this is a free hip, and you see the legs come apart. She is nowhere near handstand. That's five tenths for the position. That right there, another five tenths for tucking. And you know, she said that her sister actually helps coach her a little bit, sometimes moves the mats for her. And she says it's, it's really great because obviously she has so much experience, knows her so well, but she knows when she needs to kind of step apart. Uh, might not be anticipating her score, which is coming up in a moment. Yul Moldauer on the vault, 14.7. That is a giant number. Look at that, less than a half a point in deductions. Go, that is a rare thing to see Trust in now, gymnastics at this point. And now supporting his teammate, Alan Bauer, who is up next. Alan yeah. Bauer was team captain at Oklahoma last year, was part of that team that went three in a row NCAA championships. And he's in fourth now. He started after the first rotation in seventh, but he is the kind of guy that just will creep up on you because he never opens the door. Gonna do the exact same vault we saw from Yule right here. Wow. <laughs> that, that was spectacular. Uh, there are very few people on planet Earth that could land in that position after doing that much gymnastics in the air and not take a step. That is what he is so good at. He doesn't ever give up on something. He is so calm, so patient. And it's not like a huge vault, doesn't get gigantic air, but he works to the end and look, he just waits. Wow. <laughs> It's interesting, patience and consistency are something that a lot of athletes never fully achieve, and he seems to have both. Well, he, he like overperforms, like consistency, consistently overperforms. He does have form in the air as you see that, and he does squat down a little bit, but he is a fighter, absolute. Now the U.S. all around silver medalist, who turns 23 this coming Wednesday. Born in Nebraska, raised in Arizona, and just graduating from the University of Oklahoma last year. A score of 14.5. And Philip Herder in fifth place. And after three rotations, the German up next on the ball. Handspring double front. Hangs on to that landing. A good job, gonna get some deductions for how low he squatted to the ground. But I'll tell you what, this guy, he had to help Team Germany qualify to the Olympic Games for 2016. They had to go to the test event and he was part of that team. And a big reason why Germany made it to Rio, unfortunately for him, he didn't get the call. And now over to the bars. Yeah, this is my Murakami, tied for first. If she were to win this American Cup, she would be the oldest woman to ever win it at the age of 21. 
world floor champion from last year in Montreal. Off to a good start so far here today. In the qualifying for the world championship, she actually was number one and really had the championships if she had stayed on balance beam. She came off, ended up fourth. But what a breakout performance for the Japanese women's national team. The men have just been on top. So dominant. Nice swing to a release skill there. Another release. Beautiful. Now that's the same one we saw Miley struggle with. She does basically the same skill. One of them is straddled, one legs together. That handstand very low. Back on track right there. She's a great gymnast. That cast to handstand also low. Going to be a deduction, but this is a pretty darn good routine. She's going to be in the hunt. So that is the end of this rotation for the women. Her score coming up, Yul Moldauer, the very charismatic 21-year-old American in a good spot on the men's side. He's the leader here in Chicago. Tuesday, March 13th, one teacher will transform a town. From the producer of Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, it's Rise, premiering Tuesday, March 13th, on NBC. Back in Chicago at the American Cup and the standings for the men. After four rotations, it's the 21-year-old American Yul Moldauer who has the lead over Sun Wei of China. Fellow American Alan Bauer rounding out the top four. While over on the women's side, still working their way through the early rotations at the American Cup. Two down, and it's the reigning world champion Morgan Hurd, the 16-year-old, who is leading the way. Once again, Steve Schlanger alongside Tim Daggett and Nastia Lukin. And as far as Yul Moldauer, he has been on a roll. Got off to a strong start on the floor and has really just been building throughout the day. Absolutely. You know what? I have seen Yul have a lot of great competitions, but honestly, I think this is the best he has ever looked. He is on track to win two American Cups in a row. That is a very elite group of athletes that have done that. And as far as Morgan Hurd on the women's side, coming off that world championship title in Montreal last year. What a sensational moment for this young woman. It absolutely was. She came in, maybe not necessarily as the favorite to win the gold medal. Of course, teammate Reagan Smith went down moments before the competition started, but she delivered a performance of a lifetime. Best in the world. When we talked to her earlier this week, we said, what is it like to be the best in the world? She goes, me? I don't, I don't think you're talking That's about me. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute. Uh, Yul Moldauer hopes to keep the momentum rolling here at the American Cup. We'll see him as we continue from the Sears Center Arena. Women on beam. This is Elizabeth Seitz of Germany. Her first time back at the American Cup since 2013. Two-time Olympian. And an athlete to struggle with back pain leading up to the World Championships last year, coming back healthy this year. And for so many of these international athletes, this is their first big event of the year. For some of the college gymnasts, they're already in the middle of their season, so they maybe have an advantage of being more on form. But for some others, they're just getting into the swing of things. Absolutely. The college men, they, they are a little bit more prepared for this. But I'll tell you what, she is such a veteran. She has competed at every world championship since 2009. And as I said earlier, just a heartbreakingly close competition at the Olympic Games on uneven bars, 33 thousandths of a point. She missed a medal on and she lost it to her teammate Sophie Schrader. But she's done a lot of amazing things. She won a World Cup last year on the uneven bars. She won the Olympic test event on uneven bars. And she said, you know, we spend so 
many hours, hour after hour, alone in the gym, just working and working. I love the competitions. I get to come and show off to the thousands of fans that are there and show them just how hard we work. Boy. Some nerves right from the top, but good save. Seems to be on track again. Oh boy, simple full turn that she's done since she was a child as a gymnast on beam and has not a small adjustment, you know. As I said, such a veteran, but on balance beam, even veterans can get eaten alive if you get a little bit cautious. Just doubting yourself, you know? It's, it's a little bit of self-doubt. How do you deal with that doubt? How do you put it out of your mind and just focus on what's in front of you? Well, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to the training. When you can go in training and be so confident in every single turn that you do and maybe have little play meets or something in, in mm -hmm. training where you feel like in training you're competing and vice versa. When you're competing, you're training. It really is a mental game. She is physically prepared to do every single skill in that beam routine. We have seen her do it here so much better. Yes, absolutely. And, and that is a sign of nerves. And you know, uh, the thing for me and what I've always said to athletes is you have to be exactly in the moment. You can't be thinking about what just happened. You can't be thinking about what's coming up. You have to be exactly in that moment. And I think, I think her mind was wandering a little bit throughout that routine. You really have to take it one skill at a time. When you're on your first skill, you can't be thinking about the third or fourth or the dismount that you might be a little bit nervous on, truly taking it one thing at a time. It's really the psychology of sports. You always train the physical skills, but the mental are just as important. Her score coming up as we continue. Back with the score of German Elizabeth Seitz, 11.6. As you see that red color, not the numbers she was hoping for. 3.1 in deductions and basically every skill in the routine, she doubted herself and every single time she lost one, two, three tenths on these skills repeatedly. And next up on beam is the American Miley O'Keefe. Two-time U.S. junior all-around champion. Her first senior competition, she said that she loves being with Morgan because they keep each other calm. And, you know, she has a little bit more experience than me, so it's very nice to have her here cheering for me, helping me out. And this routine is spectacular. It is jam-packed. This is called a wolf turn. And that right there. It's a risky turn. I saw her do that probably 15 times since she has been here in Hoffman Estates, and I have not seen her fall yet. Here we go. This is a huge test. A side aerial into two layouts in a row. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely gorgeous. And that combination is so difficult. But when done right, just like she did, it is stunning. Absolutely. One of the higher difficulty scores. You don't see two tumbling runs like this very often on beam. Also, three skills in a row, and she'll actually rebound into a layout and land with two feet, which is much more difficult. Watch right here. Oh. Tough stuff. Hang on to that.
Dismount here. She'll finish with a double back in a piked position. But she's a great gymnast. She really is tremendous. Beautiful to look at in every way, but just, you know, I mean, it's this is big time. She's on a podium, live television. It's the American Cup. But Her coaches, Soren and Tammy Sauchianu, this double turn, like I said, saw her do this time after time and make it successfully. That's the first one I saw her miss. But she came back in this series, side aerial to back layout, back layout, super difficult, gorgeous. So again, four inches wide, like we always say. That's three aerial elements in a row. Dead on. You have to be so precise in this combination. There is absolutely no room for error. Rebounds here into this layout. Just a little bit of a balance check, but I'll tell you what, she puts this routine together, and this is just a huge exercise. And you know, she hasn't had her best showing here at this competition, but do not count her out. This is early in the season, her first competition as a senior. Miley has a bright future ahead. Just turned 16 years of age earlier this week, and after the fall off the beam, nice bounce back to try and reestablish the confidence, re-engage with the routine. Nasty, what's the toughest thing about making that leap from the juniors where you have all that success to now all of a sudden you're with the best in the world? Yeah, well, it's big time, you know, <laughs> especially being a senior, the world championships coming up. This is what every little girl dreams about, becoming a national team member, then a senior national team member and ultimately becoming an Olympic team member one day. 13.066 for Miley O'Keefe. And now, from north of the border, the Canadian Brooklyn Moors in seventh place after the second rotation for the women. 17-year-old from Cambridge, Ontario. Beautiful gymnast in her own right. Her last, actually on vaulting, she struggled and did not make her vault around to her feet. Oh boy. And I'll tell you what, she has a very difficult combination planned. I hope she does it. I have never seen anybody do this, but she's gonna do a front aerial and then a front flip right out of it. Oh my God, that was great. Oh, jeez. It, that is so hard. Never have I seen anybody do that. She practiced it repeatedly and, you know, was very methodical about it in the training. I saw her make a lot of them, but I also saw her come off the beam as well. You know, every single person that has wobbled or fallen has all been on the same side. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I was a little I was a little superstitious and always had to make sure the beam was straight, but <laughs> not trying to create any excuses, but I, I do find it interesting that every single mistake has been on one side. And even with the fall, that routine, it was just kind of a breath of fresh air. So many unique skills that we're not used to seeing. Gorgeous dance in between the elements. Yeah, she's a beautiful gymnast. You know, at every Worlds and Olympics, they have a Longines prize for elegance for someone who exudes that quality. And she was that recipient at the 2017 World Championships. And here's that combination, Tim. You were talking about the front aerial. So you see right here, immediately into a front flip. Just was completely off. So here's another look. That's hard. I very, mean, that, that, very hard. That is really hard. And, you know, they may end up deciding that it's too much. Here's her dismount, a little bit unorthodox, to front handspring into a laid out somersault with one and a half twists. We call that a Rudy. Now, trying to follow in the path of her older sister, Victoria, the Olympian from 2012, Brooklyn Moores, awaiting her score here at this American Cup. 
Man. It's always such a compelling event, a unique blend of decorated Olympic medalists, world champions, up and comers making their senior level debuts. So a chance to mingle with so many different types of gymnasts from around the world and serve as a yardstick for where you're at. Absolutely. And you know, her sister, Victoria, she was third in the all around at the 2013 American Cup. And she did that in Simone Biles' coming out party. Simone didn't win that. Caitlin Ohashi won it. Simone was second. And we have learned this week that Simone Biles is back on the U.S. national team, and that's a good thing for her. But I'll tell you what, all around the world, everybody is going, oh, gosh. <laughs> This. And in order to be placed back on that national team, she had to submit her current training videos to that selection committee who said, yep, you're ready to go. But I'll tell you what, though, um, it, it's just Maria Paseka, who is a, a tremendous gymnast from Russia, uh, world champion on vaulting, just a, a, an unbelievable athlete. She was quoted as saying when she heard Simone was coming back, it was like, please, please don't come back. You have too many medals already. Let us have some. Give someone else a chance. How long would it take someone like Simone Biles with her immense talent to get back to her top form? Well, you know, she never let herself get completely out of shape, you know, and she is just, not only is she a great gymnast, but she's a phenomenal athlete. And so things come easier for her, and she can get back into shape a little quicker. Yule Moldauer trying to maintain his position at the top of the standings. This is actually my favorite routine for Yule. It, beautiful execution. Now, watch this right here. Gonna do a giant and then one more. Well, look, spin on one arm. I'll tell you what, gymnasts dream of having error-free days like Yule has had. This doesn't happen very often nowadays. Big dismount, double front half. He can stick that, but another really solid exercise for Yule Moldauer. National silver medalist on the parallel bars. And Yul Moldauer, a comprehensive performance here today at the American Cup. And Morgan Hurd, the reigning world champion for the U.S., is up next when we continue. A 14.5 on the parallel bars for Yul Moldauer who continues his march to what he hopes will be back-to-back -back titles at this American Cup. And as I said, that's another green. Five events in the green. Doesn't happen. He was sick on Thursday during the warm-ups for this event, was trying to get over that, and I would say that he has conquered the illness coming in here today and really got off to that hot start and has not looked back. Had a bit of a fever on Thursday. And now Morgan Hurd, the leader on the women's side. You know, I got to spend quite a little bit of time with her in Texas a few weekends ago, and I was just so surprised. I've gotten to know her over the years, but so surprised about how mature she really is acted way beyond her age. It's fun to spend some time with her outside the gym, but she not only is mature outside of the gym, but really inside the gym as well, handles the pressure, the adversity really well. Yeah, her coaches say that one of the major reasons for her success is she is an absolute workhorse taking two to three turns more than every other gymnast in the gym. She says her teammates get a little mad at her sometimes because <laughs> she'll jump in when no one's on the bar and they'll say, hey, that was my turn. Well, no one else was going. <laughs> now, she lives with her mom, Sherry, in Delaware, just about an hour outside of Philadelphia. And her mom says, I don't know where she got all of these skills in terms of the organization, the independence, the poise, the maturity. I didn't have any of that, <laughs> but she's just had it since I can remember. Yeah, talk about an early achiever. She says that ever since three, I knew I wanted to win the Olympics. Not go to the Olympics, win the Olympics. What took so long? Three years of age? <laughs> Telling herself something, maybe singing a song here. Whatever gets you in the zone. 
while we wait there. Over to the parallel bars. And for the men, this is Petro Peknyuk, the 26-year-old Ukrainian from Kiev. He actually has a very interesting history. He started his international competition with Team Ukraine, had an offer to go compete for Azerbaijan, went there for a little bit of time, said it wasn't right for him, couldn't get the training that he was looking for, petitioned to go back to Ukraine. It was accepted, so here we are. And also said it was more about the results in Azerbaijan, whereas in Ukraine it was about the process and approach to achieve those results. Absolutely. He's great here. Beautiful parallel bar worker. The Ukrainian leader, Oleg Vernayev, who was runner-up to King Kohei Uchimura at the Olympic Games in the all-around. Runner-up very close, too. Was so close to winning that gold medal. But Oleg, who is often in the American Cup, is actually recuperating from a, a couple of different surgeries. It might even be three. Shoulder and legs. Really nice handstand position. Little bit of a balance check. Double front with a half. That was awesome. <laughs> that, that looked like the half pipe right there. He was like, <laughs> he was like twisting sideways. That was great. Double front with a half done very unconventionally. And now over to beam. And Japan's Mai Murakami sitting in second after two rotations. I'll tell you what, if she gets through beam, this is not a slam dunk for Morgan Hurd because Mai is fantastic on floor. So far, super confident, very calm. A little bit of a balance check there. Won the qualifying at the World Championships. And on this event, came off on a double turn. Not sure if she's taken it out. You're required to do some type of a turning element like that. Doesn't necessarily have to be as difficult as the double turn that she did. This is jam-packed. Right here. <laughs> Smart move. That was a double in Montreal, and that really is what cost her a podium finish and po quite possibly the gold medal. Powerful gymnast. Gorgeous double pike. Well, the Rio Olympian, four-time world championship team member, Mai Murakami, her score coming up. This is Petro Pachniuk, the Ukrainian, his score of 14-9 from a few moments ago on the parallel bars. And now the American, Alan Bauer, fourth after four rotations, but we've already seen two of the athletes who are ahead of him in the standing struggle on these bars, so this is a big opportunity. Little bit short on that handstand. Should have just flown up there, had to use a lot of strength. That'll be a deduction for sure. Release skill right here. One and a quarter front, done with his legs straddled, makes it more Difficult. That was a great save. He was he was off balance on that swing to a handstand. It's called a stutz. And he can stick as well. Double pike. Ugh. Well, he has really shown no sign of nerves. He says he actually has to find his mom in the stands every petition and tell her to be calm before the meet. <laughs> Normally you'd think it'd be the other way around. Yeah, I was actually sitting behind both of his parents at the recent Winter Cup and they were struggling. <laughs> it's, it's painful as a parent. Over to the beam now and here's the American Morgan Hurd in first place after two rotations.
And see, this is what I like to see. You know, she, she can see that the judges aren't ready for her. And a lot of times, you know, if you're inexperienced or uncomfortable, you, you just stand still and you stand in that exact place just waiting for the judge. She saw they weren't ready. She took her time. She walked off, put a little bit more chalk on her, on her feet. Now follow American Alan Bauer on a score of 13.766 with his parallel bars routine. Sitting alongside Yul Moldauer, who is the current leader right now in the men's standings. Yeah, both Hall from Great Britain and Sun Wei from China fell on parallel bars, which opens the door. Yeah, two Oklahoma products right here, Moldauer and Bauer. Yes, they are. And my Murakami on the balance beam, a score of 13.6. Just over two points of deductions for her. I don't know, Tim. In my opinion, I feel like that's a little bit low on the deductions. I, I definitely didn't see two points worth there. Yeah, I agree. I'll tell you what, though, at the World Championships, the evaluation of balance beam was the most brutal I have ever seen on any event at any competition. Right from the start. Watch this skill right here. Very difficult. Standing full. Oh, baby. Stunning. Not one time did I see her come off the beam on that. In training here. Montreal, she was a little bit skittish on it. She was able to hold on. Actually won a silver medal on this event in Montreal at the Worlds. See her talking herself through every single skill. Philip Hanover of Germany on parallel bars. Very nice. Tell you what, though, her dismount is off the charts, difficult. And it's brand new, so it is an upgrade from the World Championships. She's gonna do a full twisting double, but she'll keep her legs straight on it. Oof. Really good, but a little bit low on that landing. But that is, that is tough stuff. So Morgan Hurd. Looking to maintain the lead for the women here at the American Cup in Chicago. Despite the two points of deductions for Morgan Hurd on the balance beam, she is still going to maintain her lead here in the women's competition at the American Cup. So Morgan Hurd maintains her momentum. And with more on Morgan, let's send you over to Andrea Joyce. Well, Steve, Morgan Hurd will tell you that being the world gymnastics all-around champion at age 16 is a pretty awesome thing. But gymnastics, as it turns out, is not her only passion. She also loves to read. Morgan describes describes herself as a Harry Potter junkie. She has been known to dress up in character and stand in long lines to get the latest release. So you can imagine her delight when she got a tweet from the Harry Potter author, J.K. Rowling, congratulating her on her world success. Rowling called her a real life hero in glasses. And Morgan told us that she was so excited she actually cried. And when we asked her which was better, the title or the tweet, she thought about it for a minute and said, I think it's a tie. Steve? Well, she loves to read. All of her friends are always on social media, but she has to have a book in her hands, not even a, a Kindle. She needs to feel the pages. Yeah, she's feeling the lead right now at the American Cup. All rise for Premier League mornings on NBCSN. It's one of football's biggest rivalries as Liverpool visit the Theatre of Dreams to take on Manchester United. Always compelling at Old Trafford, and it's next Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Today in Chicago, it is Morgan Hurd, the 16-year-old American reigning world champion, the leader after three rotations at this American Cup, but two Americans in the top three. You also have Miley O'Keefe. 
just over a point and a half back. While on the men's side, it is Yul Moldauer, the 21-year-old from the University of Oklahoma, looking to win this event for the second year in a row. He is the leader by over two and a half points. Well, Yule and Morgan have been simply spectacular here at the American Cup this afternoon. And as far as Yule, what has stuck out the most about his performance through all of these rotations? Well, as, as close to perfection as I've seen any gymnast be. I mean, he has been phenomenal uh, from the very start till his last dismount on parallel bars. He's got over two and a half points of a lead. He can fall once, maybe twice on high bar and win his second in a row Amer American Cup. And Asti, as far as Morgan Heard coming off the momentum of the World Championships last year, but first time at this American Cup, and she is not disappointed. Not one bit, and she has showed exactly what she did at the World Championships. She is prepared, she's capable to not only handle the pressure, the nerves, the expectations, she has a, almost a point lead here going into the final event. Great floor team coming up, but she has even more things planned. She showed me a few videos on her iPhone. Just wait later this season. So Morgan Hurd, back to action as we continue from the American Cup. Reigning national all-around champion, reigning American Cup champion, NCAA champion, Yule Moldauer. And the American, at this rate, poised for his second win at the American Cup. If he keeps this momentum rolling along and showing no signs of slowing down. Now born in Seoul, South Korea, adopted before he was one year old, grew up on a farm in Colorado before attending the University of Oklahoma, where he really started to mature, come into his own, and then last year, the breakout year, and boy, the potential for Yule Moldauer, just sky high. Absolutely, and you know, ever since he was a little kid, he has been surrounded by the Olympics, Olympianism. Sasha Artemov, a teammate of his, who he trained with, was the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist on pommel horse. So from a very young age, you all saw greatness every single day. And he's thankful for that. He said so many people in this country want to be in the spot that I'm in, and I take it very seriously. This isn't the American Cup. This is the American <laughs> Cup. And this is Elizabeth Seitz of Germany. Well, a great finish for her. Not as difficult as we are going to be seeing from Morgan Hurd and some of the other competitors, but overall a great competition. Good start to the season as she looks ahead towards the World Championships in Tokyo 2020 in a few years. And we swing over to the high bar, and this is the American Alan Bauer. And you know, I, I was very surprised that he had some struggles on parallel bars. He's been dealing with what we call a rip on his hand, and parallel bars is the most challenging event when you have that. He's also 
Not doing his most difficult release. He'll just do a double back over the bar. It's called a Kovax. And that was not a great re-grasp. And when you bend your elbows on that, it's just like bending your knees. So it's a one, three, or five tenth deduction. That was five. Full twisting double layout. A hop on the landing, I'll tell you. Through four events, he was really great, but opened the door on the last one, and this one was not nearly what he's capable of doing. He grew up in Arizona, and after being born in Nebraska, his mom was a big eight champion in the all-around at the University of Nebraska. We'll get his score in a moment. Meantime, Kelly Sim of Great Britain is next on the floor. Top five after three rotations. Went out of bounds. That's a tenth of a point. One tenth if it's one foot, three if it's two. Ooh. That was a good save there. Ooh. Very under rotated. Wow. Didn't quite have the power. A solid routine here for Kelly. She said she was so excited to compete here at the American Cup, competes in the British Championships next week. So what a great warm-up competition for that. And the score for Alan Bauer, 12.866. Two points of deductions. And next up is the German, Philip Herder, in seventh after five rotations. Herder, the 25-year-old from Berlin, three-time world championship team member for Germany, but looking to participate in the Olympics for the first time in Tokyo. He was an alternate back in Rio in 2016. Yeah, and as I said, he helped Germany make it to the Olympic Games at the test event. He said, I got to experience everything but the competition. Release right here. A nice, what we call a jam to a handstand. Used to be a required element to do that. It is no longer so. And that one should have gone right to the handstand position. This is a solid routine, but a lot of deductions, including that 310 hop. So his score will be coming up in a moment. He's Next gotten better routine. on gotten better on high bar though. He says at least now I'm not embarrassed anymore <laughs> when I do high bar. It's it's gotten better, but some kids, I'll tell you, when they're young, they they try to do high bar and right from the beginning they have a fear. So while we wait for his score, it is over to the floor. And this is Brooklyn Moores of Canada. When she made her international debut at the World Championships last year, was fifth on the floor at her home worlds, which were in Montreal. And this I is just an absolutely stunning floor routine. Every part of it. And I just, I really hope that she 
gets herself back on track. She has really struggled today, but the tumbling is phenomenal and the artistry is gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. I could go on and on and on about this routine. If there was a how-to tutorial for how to do a floor routine, this would be the one to watch and learn from. Phenomenal. Just, just gorgeous, gorgeous gymnastics. So Philip Herder, the German from a few moments ago, a score of 13.1 on the high bar. While next up, it will be Japan's Kenzo Shirai, an Olympic and world champion. Was one of the big favorites coming in today. Started off strong on the floor, but then really stumbled in rotation two on the pommel horse that's dropped his standing. Fifth going into the last rotation. His major release right here, way too close to the bar. Has to do a kip out of it, which you're not allowed to do anymore. Oh boy, I can't believe he did that. We call that going out the back door. When you stoop your legs in and you're supposed to shoot up your shoulders, dislocate. But he just went a little bit too aggressive. The judges want to see you rock solid right up to the handstand, and it is so close to perfection. But sometimes when you try to tread on that line, you that go also the wrong doesn't way. feel good. <laughs> what do you make of the mistakes we've seen from him here today? Well, you know, we've said it over and over again, and you have as well. It is a very early World Cup. That's what the American Cup is, and a lot of these athletes are not in the type of condition that they want to be. He came in relatively early. I believe they were here on Monday, but it is a long trip from Japan. Another release. Survives that one, but has to bend his elbows. Sure, he wanted for Japan a much better showing than he has had today, but he's a champion. Not the performance he wanted, but Yul Moldauer has been rolling as he brings us to the conclusion of the American Cup, looking for the win after this. The American Cup has been brought to you by Gymnastics Safe Sport. Together we can. And by the National Gymnastics Foundation Athlete Assistance Fund. Working our way towards the end of the American Cup in Chicago, an event that's been held since 1976, and the 16-year-old American Morgan Hurd, the leader by almost a point. Her fellow American Miley O'Keefe also in the top three. But my Murakami, you can't count her out. She's in second place, about a point behind, but she is the world champion on floor exercise. Morgan's got a hit. 
So the warm-up continues for Morgan Hurd, while for the men, it is Yule Moldauer trying to defend his title from a year ago and well on his way with a lead of over two and a half points. Yeah, really, he's just got to grab the bar a bunch of times. And if he does that, it's, it's an absolute that he will repeat as the American Cup champion. If there's one event where Yule does struggle a little bit, it's high bar. He's so quick that sometimes he gets going too fast on his prep skills, like before the major releases, and he can just fly past the bar. Yeah. So this is his warm-up. He'll be the final athlete to go in the final rotation for the men. Well, all of these athletes coming together here, first premier international event of the year, biggest on U.S. soil, but everybody looking ahead at 2020 and Tokyo. Now that the Winter Olympics are in the rearview mirror, Tokyo is on the clock. And as far as the path to those next summer games, where do these athletes want to be going forward from this event? Well, you know, the world championships that are going to be held uh, in the fall, they are the first qualifying for the Olympic Games. The top three teams will earn a berth for the Olympics at that championships. And one of the things that's important to note, teams have been five-person teams up until this point in the last couple of Olympic Games. It will be a four-person team, but there are two, it's very complicated, two athletes that can qualify as an individual or an individual all-around gymnast. And, you know, it's not only just about having a great showing at the Olympic trials right before the Olympic Games. They are going to be looking back at previous world championships, international competitions. So it is going to be really important starting right here today to be as consistent as possible now leading up to the Olympic Games. And Nestor Abad of Spain in ninth place after five rotations. Native of Madrid will turn 25 at the end of this month. He was in Rio, part of the Spanish team at the Olympics in Brazil, and trying to overcome a series of injuries over the years. And I love this. He said, if you have a dream, protect it. Protect it. People who cannot do it by themselves will tell you that neither can you. But if you want it, go and get it. How true, Nastia, huh? Love that. <laughs> this is actually his favorite event. Nice release there. Showed good height. Little leg separation right there, but finished on top of the bar. Another variation of a... Oh. Oh, oh, my gosh. And that right there is because he was not exactly in the moment. He was thinking about what was coming because it basically would have taken, like... Two pounds of pressure just pulling on the bar just a little bit harder. I mean, this is fine here. He just lets go of that hand that's on the bar and doesn't yank himself over enough. And I guarantee you when he does that in training, that probably never happens. And if it does, very rarely because he is in that moment. I like this guy a lot, though, has a lot of the qualities you need to be a tremendous athlete. Didn't show that to us today at the American Cup, but he'll be back. So funny, it sounds simple to say be in the moment, but as an athlete, you guys know best. You're always looking back at a mistake or looking ahead at what you have to do next. It's not that easy to be right there in that moment. Well, everything happens so quickly, especially on the events like the high bar for women, the uneven bars. It's one skill after another after another, so many times connected, and that is what makes it so difficult. But you do have to stay in that moment thinking only about the skill that you're currently doing. Then you quickly move on to the next. That's what the great people do. The great athletes are able to control negative thought and to stay exactly in the moment, in my opinion. And finish strong like that. So the men just getting underway in their final rotation at this American Cup. 
Manuel Moldauer of the U.S., our leader, will be last. Nestor Abad kicking things off. He talks about gymnastics, and he says that it has never stopped being a hobby, being fun, and I hope it never will. It's what helps me to dedicate all the time and the passion to this sport that I love so much. He made a bet with his father one time that if he won the Spanish National Championships, he would give up smoking. He won and has not had a cigarette since. That's, that's great. I read that, and I was just so happy to hear that. So we will wait for his score. In the meantime, things much tighter on the women's side as we bring you to the floor. And as we mentioned, she is the reigning world champion on the floor exercise. Elmai Murakami, four-time world championship team member, part of the Japanese squad in Rio. But she has the momentum from this event in Montreal when she won the floor at the Worlds last year. And she can do something to Morgan Hurd. She can put even more pressure on her. Now Mor Morgan. Morgan has actually upgraded her floor routine from Montreal, having a new skill in there. So, of course, it's going to be more difficult. But we'll have to see if, you know, with a little bit of pressure, some expectations, someone right behind you, if you are able to live up to that pressure. I think she can do it. <laughs> well, a chance to post a score, put the pressure on Hurd, and if she overcomes Hurd and wins, she'll be the oldest female winner of this event in history at 21 years of age. And she is going to make Morgan Hurd earn this great, difficult exercise. And I bet you she is thinking, what if I could have had the performance I had today just a few <laughs> months ago at those World Championships? An embrace with the leader, Morgan Hurd. A lot of people ask me about that in gymnastics. You see that often on both the men's and the women's side. There's no defense in gymnastics. It kind of really breeds a camaraderie with athletes all around the world. She can't tackle Morgan Hurd during this floor routine, although she might want to. Over on the high bar, it is Sunway of China, the 22-year-old. His third appearance at this American Cup has been on the podium before, finished third back in 2016 in an event where sometimes you don't see athletes come to the American Cup on multiple occasions. But he's been a regular. But I'll tell you, Team China at the Rio Olympic Games, it was an abysmal performance. One team bronze medal. They had so many athletes that could have won not just medals, but gold medals on several events. Oh. <clears throat> And that smarts. Wow. Just went a little bit too hard on that skill. His body traveled across the bar. 
was super aggressive, trying to go extra hard. Heels come up maybe a little long. I don't know why he didn't grab that, though. And Steve, speaking from someone who has done that exact thing many times in my life, that hurts, and he's going to be very sore from it. You felt the pain. I did. So when you got back on the bar, what did you do to get yourself back into the routine? Yeah, I just, I just tried to, to not think about it. And this is epically bad. I was starting to say China had such a terrible Olympic Games, but then in 2017, they just rocketed back to the top. They had the first and the second place all-rounder and a gold medal on parallel bars. He's out of it. Meantime, Mai Murakami of Japan on the floor of 14-0-3-3. So now Morgan Hurd, the leader coming into this exercise, needs better than 13-0-6-7. Which is very doable for Morgan. But as you said, Nastia, she is upgrading. She does the same mount that we saw Mai Murakami do. It's a double twisting double. And then she does the same second pass that Mai did, which is a double layout, but that's new for Morgan. She said she was going to work on her landings here, and that was great. Here's the new pass. Well, what an incredible six months Morgan Hurd has had world all-around champion. And now the American Cup champion. That is going to be good enough to do it. As we've said, you want to do so many things in the sport. World champion, Olympic champion, national champion, and you want to win the American Cup. Check that box off, Morgan Hurd. Two down, two to go. She handled such enormous pressure at the World Championships in Montreal. In her first World Championships, had never won an individual title at an international event. The pressure of continuing the strong U.S. tradition. She answered the call there. Murakami put the pressure on her here. And once again, the 16-year-old comes through and delivers. And here's that opening pass, a double twisting, double back, two flips, two twists. Just beautiful on that landing, oh. bam. <laughs> awesome. And a smile to finish. <laughs> Here's the new pass. It's a double laid out somersault. This could have been better. The landing could have been better. Got a little bit hung up in the air. Has to kind of pike her legs down a little bit, slides back and takes another step, but. And here's that final tumbling pass. Again, she told us all week long she wants to clean up her landings. And just a tiny hop there. I would say mission accomplished after today. Upgraded the routine here. Has even more upgrades to come in Got this routine. Lead. We knew she would eventually be the champion. They can't crown it yet. But Miley O'Keefe cannot overtake her. And she did pass Mai Murakami with that and tremendous routine. Her teammate Miley O'Keefe, who she's been talking to throughout the day, 
offering words of encouragement. Third coming into this final rotation. The two-time U.S. Junior All-Around Champion. You know, Miley actually said that a nice goal would to be top three and anything above would be a cherry on top. Unfortunately, not the best competition, but top three is still doable. Love this routine, the tumbling, the choreography. This is a Nancy Roach choreographed routine. Foot touches the white, it's out of bounds, a tenth of a point for that. That's a great way to finish for her. Very happy. You know, sometimes we see athletes wilt under the pressure and, and really go out of the box with some of the errors they make. That wasn't the case with her. She had a fall on balance beam. She landed on the bar on an uneven bars, but she was calm and composed, and she still has a very bright future. And now on the high bar. Final routine for Yule Moldauer of the U.S. He needs better than a 10.999. So, Tim, that begs the question, how many times can he fall and still win? He can fall it absolutely <laughs> once, most likely twice. But more than that, Yule could do the routine that he competed when he was about 11 years old and win this American Cup. Nice one arm giant. But once again, this one goes, needs to go right to a handstand. This is where he has to be careful. Sometimes he gets going too fast. Not that one. Been able to do this since he was about nine years old, I bet. Full twisting double layout, your champ. Two in a row for Yule Moldauer. Convincing, demonstrative performance by Yul Moldauer to win his second straight American Cup. And you know, it's not just a great day for Yule. USA Gymnastics at the last two Olympic Games, they've really underperformed. Eight years ago, they led after qualifying, finished a dismal fifth at the last Olympics. They were second after qualifying out of the medals again with fifth. But Yule has the consistency that the Team USA has been lacking. That release that I was talking about, where sometimes he gets going just a little bit too fast. And this was fast. If, if I were in the gym, I would have said, slow down a little bit, Yule, but the timing is good. Let's go nice and early. Watch him looking for that bar. Latches on, straight arms afterwards. And that dismount, Tim, I just have to say it because you didn't say it all day, Gymnastics 101, fly high and stick the landing. Stop stealing my stuff. <laughs> 
what he's done all day long. So Yul Moldauer, Morgan Hurd, champions in 2018, and now they're both with Andrea. Well, we talked about Morgan loving Harry Potter, and it did feel like there was a little bit of magic out there. Can you describe what this is like for you to follow up that world championship with this American Cup title? Oh, I just feel ecstatic. I went, I got home from Worlds, and I just didn't stop training. I still worked 110% every day, getting back into that routine shape. Took a few days off, but that's about it. And I'm just glad to see my hard work pay off. So you had said a year ago that you were worried about your lack of consistency. What's different for you now? I think Worlds definitely helped me gain my consistency a lot and just gain my confidence. I try to focus on like one skill at a time. I don't rush ahead of myself anymore. Okay, congratulations, and you'll talk about consistency. You're the first guy in over a decade to win back-to-back -back American Cup titles. Last year sort of launched your breakthrough season. What does this one mean for you? Uh, you know, it's special. You know, I want to thank 5280. I want to thank my coaches, Vlad and Arena, and then I want to thank all the guys at OU and Mark Talkie and C for just helping get to where I'm at today. And every day I get to come out and represent USA. It's a big honor because it's something special. You get to represent your country. Tim Daggett said he thought this was the best he had ever seen you compete. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are definitely things I know in my head that I still need to fix. Landings, of course. My high oh, yeah, it was so bad. Well, you know, there's, there's always something you can be doing. So I always, you know, take this meet and look at it, see what I need to work on, and just move on from there. All right, congratulations. Steve? Andrea, thank you very much. What stood out the most about Moldauer here today, Tim? Consistently, start to finish, just being darn near perfect. As he gets the win ahead of James Hall and Petro Pechniuk, while on the women's side, it's Morgan Hurd, really with her back up against the wall because of Murakami, but she answered the challenge. She absolutely did. She showed the world one more time what she's capable of doing. Shed so much light on the sport of gymnastics here today. There are your winners, Hurd and Moldauer. And tonight at 8 on NBC, the NHL Stadium Series heads to Annapolis in the Naval Academy as the Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Washington Capitals. Coming up next on NBC, it's the third round of the WGC Mexico Championship. And now for Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce, I'm Steve Schlanger. Thanks for joining us, everyone, as Hurd and Moldauer are the winners in 2018 as we say so long from the American Cup.